this 50 millimeter diameter pipe you get it stock standard everywhere um, I have cut into it here because of the paint level a uh, paint the the old paint I had to sand it a bit so I could fit the joint over and there is the old connection which I had to close and it goes off to the wetland which I showed you last week um, just explain to you about a little bit about this system is so here is the toilet um, and here is the shower water the bath our bath and um, it's all used to go together into the drains which mixes with the sewage and with this slight detour I was able to redirect the water to a wetland which is you know allowing me to self save copious amounts of water every day um, so th this is an air vent for the toilet so which allows the smelly air <laughs> to get out through the top this one is for the basin there it is it's going into the wall and that's for the shower this this connection which I started making a little tea, tea, a little T piece will allow me to connect into this branch and save now the shower as well as the bathroom basin all the water from there so here we go <laughs> we have a typical drain here which um, again uses the same 50 millimeter uh, diameter pipe as you see it's a bit caked with old paint um, so the thinking is obviously to pre-plan where your water is going to go so in this instance I'm going I'm planning to take this water through to the garden which I'll explain to you later so through you get a few elbows and connectors that you can you know go up down and underneath the bricks so a good plan will can save you quite a bit of work and a lot of extra necessary trips to the plumbing shop or the fitting shop or the builders warehouse wherever it is so once you've planned and you've measured and you've measured and you've planned then the plumbing itself is pretty you know the cutting is pretty quick so here it is real time Now that we have our cut, the next step would be to sand this guy down because it's got quite a lot of paint, so you could attach your next fitting. <clears throat> so the two simple fittings that I'll explain to you are this little guy. Now he's got a standard thread to a garden hose, although for with this kitchen water you'll block this entrance up pretty quick. So I wouldn't recommend but if you have bath or clean water or you have or a good sieve that catches lots of bits you could go to this attachment and you could run a pipe down into your garden but as I said <clears throat> with grey water there are two things to remember that you, you gotta have a decent size so the water can flow and then you gotta have a good gradient so gradient is, is important so the lower I cut the lower I'll have to go underground to keep the three degrees gradient flowing down, allowing the water to flow down. So it's important to notice that and it's important to understand that because if you have a pipe going absolutely straight, eventually the bits and pieces will clog the pipe up. You have to have to have a three degree gradient, just slightly three degrees allowing the water to go down always down you cannot take the water up and down because that will block it up it has to go down and down and down okay so as, as i explained this is pretty simple this you can fit straight over and now you have an attachment that allows you to either take your pipe so this is called a, a busher so you do get this male, which is this version, and then the female, which is the thread on the inside. So I don't have the female, so I'll use a male and another male. <laughs> and you can basically now, yeah. So, and then you can obviously take your pipe to go through a garden. So this is not a thick pipe, it's 20 mil diameter. Um, as I said, not, uh, it's not gonna work with kitchen waters, but if you have a bath or a shower, 
it's perfect for that and you can take that water easily with a flexi pipe through to any part of your garden as long as that point is down or to your wetland <clears throat> when it comes to kitchen pipe we have this attachment and this guy so this guy connect straight onto the 50 mil pipe okay you don't even need to have glue because it's a pretty snug fit with gray water there is no pressure so this will be perfect and then you've got this fitment that will go through with a much bigger pipe so this could take the water from the sink the the kitchen sink with bits and pieces straight to in your to a special spot in your garden which i'll explain to you in a while yeah that's that's pretty much it um sh if you are renting um and you do need to cut in you can fix up the system with this attachment it's a straight socket and it connects back to a 50 mil pipe so when you're leaving the place you could reconnect it and you obviously push that through to your old attachment and with a little bit of pvc weld you glue this all up and the system is as good as new um if the pine has been if the pipe has been painted you can give it a fresh coat of paint so <laughs> the new the, the owners of the property would not notice you know and it's easy to ask for permission it's easy to uh, i don't know what the saying is but you know what i mean <laughs> Yes, I'd like to answer a few questions that, so a few extra questions that the readers have asked. So, is it expensive and complicated? Well, you know, <laughs> this, this cost me, I think, 20 rand and 10 meters of pipe is probably another 200 rand. So, no, I, I can't uh, consider this as expensive, providing that you will save copious amounts of water. Time, well, <laughs> it was a few minutes of my work um, and now I'm saving every single bath or shower water which now I can take to my fruit trees so you know I wouldn't say that took me a lot of time either um, yes it obviously does take time to build up a little wetland and I'll be talking more about it in a while the one I showed you last week and as I said that took me three hours with two guys and uh, we had that complete so with one guy or you alone it will take you a, a full a full saturday or, or one sunday and you'll have the wetland complete in one day how sustainable is it well <laughs> ten thousand liters of water a month saving uh, i'd say that's pretty sustainable and um, it's a pretty good return on investment and um yeah with the new water restrictions the price of water will go up and should the rain continue not falling in Johannesburg and other places in around Africa, they can, the government will push the price probably by 10 to 20 fold within a year. Capital layout, um, as I said, you could go for different systems. Um, the trick with this is that it got to go straight to a tree or mulch pit. And, um, and if you do want the cleaner water for your vegetables, uh, um, you got to push it to your wetland so the wetland cost me under 2000 rand with plants in two to three months you'll pay the system off where do you start well <laughs> you start at the exit of water <laughs> yeah um you check where the water comes out it obviously gets a lot more trickier if the outlet is underground and i have one of those and i've got some special secret that i'll be sharing with you in due course on how to get the water from that low level out to, to a wetland. I have mentioned the siphon pump and um, hopefully I can show it to you soon. Right now, I have a very special announcement. As I have been planning this for seven years and I'm going to be running my first workshop on the 12th of December. I'll be sharing how to construct a wetland, more intricate plumbing and a bit of rainwater harvesting techniques from in tanks as well as storing <clears throat> as well as storing water in the ground so if you would love to learn more i would love to teach you i have 
some awesome knowledge to share that I've learned in California and New Mexico and all the years of res uh, researching water and having built six wetlands already. I will have quite a bit of knowledge to share and it actually is bursting to come out of me. So 12th of December, Dara is the date. I would love to see you. The workshop is going to be in Johannesburg. And in the next video, I'll be sharing with you a bit of more information about the workshop as well as some stories from other readers that have been posted in the last couple of weeks. So scroll below, leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking. Or alternatively, go to my website www.alosha.co and leave a comment there. Um, click a like button or <laughs> thumbs down. I would love to know what you're thinking. Namaste. Have a great day.